Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'll be reviewing the Monport 30 Watt Fiber Laser. It's a super fast, powerful, and accurate machine, perfect for many different types of metal specifically, but you can also work on plastics, rocks, and leather. It's an impressive machine, but is it the right machine for you? Well, let's find out. The first thing you will notice when this machine arrives is that we're dealing with a pretty heavy duty machine as it is shipped in a crate that weighs over 100 pounds. It's very well packaged and you can tell a lot of care goes into making sure the laser gets to you in one piece. Assembly was very straightforward and really only requires attaching the lifting shaft to the base plate and the laser head to the gantry. The laser was already attached to the control tower from the factory. The machine also came with a bag of supplies to aid in this, including some Allen wrenches, a tape measure, uh, in metric, which is nice to see, a USB drive with the software, drivers, and manual, a pedal for batch jobs, a power cable with a nice aviation connection to make sure it stays connected to the power, a pair of safety goggles with the safety rating of 1064 nanometer OD4 written right on them, which is really nice to see a monitor attachment bracket if you want to hook up a monitor directly to the gantry itself. I ended up connecting a really small touchscreen monitor and a mini computer to the bracket to run the laser. There was also a cable in there for hooking the machine up to a ground source. However, if your power source is already connected to earth, I'm not sure that this is necessary. There is also a bag of assorted bolts and a stopper lever for locking your laser at a particular height so it doesn't move and the user manual of course to get you started. So as I said before, this is the 30 watt fiber laser in what is called a split fiber design. All that means is that the fiber source and the actual lens and base are split into two parts. This is the 30 watt machine but Monport also sells a 20 watt and 50 watt machine as well with the exact same setup. The laser source of this machine is a Rakus 30 watt with a lifetime of up to 100,000 hours of use. The machine is also what is known as a Galvo laser that I've talked about in my videos before, but essentially again it's referring to the fact that the laser head itself does not move, but a tiny mirror inside the laser head does, allowing the machine to engrave it up to an incredible 7,000 millimeters per second. That's really fast. The laser that comes out of the machine is a 1064 nanometer infrared wavelength, which means the machine again is intended for metals, hard plastic, slate, leathers, and materials like that. Fiber lasers are not intended for things such as wood and should never be tried with wood as it's a big fire hazard. The 30 watt machine also comes with a 200 millimeter lens attached to it. This means that the workable area of the machine comes in around 8 by 8 inches, or really 200 by 200 millimeters. The lens is removable, and I purchased a 110 millimeter lens to swap out with the machine that would give me a more compact 110 by 110 millimeters. Now, why would I purposely want to reduce the workable area of the machine in this way? And that all has to do with the power of the machine. When you're able to engrave at 200 by 200 millimeters, the power of the 30 watt laser is spread out over that entire area. When you make the focus distance smaller, you're essentially saying that the 30 watts is spread over a smaller area and thus can output more power. Don't get me wrong, the 200 millimeter lens can still pack quite a punch, but if you know that you're gonna want a more concentrated power, then going with a smaller lens can be very helpful. To focus the machine, and in this case the 200 millimeter lens, you need to make sure that the bottom of the laser is 250 millimeters from the surface you're trying to engrave. To do this, you turn the knob at the top of the gantry until you're at the proper height. It's a good idea to measure the thickness of the part you are engraving on, and then you can add that to the 250 millimeters that you can also gauge by a ruler on the gantry. There is also a set of three laser pointers that you can use to adjust your height. If they are not on by default, you can press the button at the top here to turn them on. 
you will see three separate points and they should converge where your laser is at the proper height. Now, do keep in mind that every laser could be slightly different, so it's important to check to see that your laser is at the proper height. And there are tests that you can run to find out basically where the height where the laser is the brightest and loudest is the correct height. After you are at the proper height, you can use the knob on the side of the gantry to lock in your position. One of those red lasers is also what will allow you to position the design on the object you are engraving on. You can either do this with the bounding box around the entire object or with a detailed contour on the entire design itself. This is critical when engraving on smaller objects that you would otherwise have no way to align. The machine also comes with a USB drive with all of the software and drivers that you need to get the machine up and running. It comes with EasyCAD 2, which I have used in the past to control fiber lasers, but this time I wanted to control the machine with Lightburn as it is compatible with the laser and is my laser software of choice. Like I said, EasyCAD 2 comes with the machine and is free, but Lightburn does not and does require you to purchase the Galva license to use it. If you already have another Lightburn license, the Galva license is a $90 add-on, or if you're getting Lightburn for the first time, it's $150 for that Galva license key. So before I get into showing what I made with this machine, I wanted to briefly talk about some resources to look over when trying to figure out how to use these machines in the first place as they are a little bit different than your standard laser diode or CO2 machine. It would be a whole long video just to go over how to use these machines, but luckily there are videos already made by Alex over on the Laser Everything YouTube channel. If there is something you want to know about setup or software run-throughs with either EasyCAD or Lightburn, then that's the place to visit. He also has recently released his entire fiber power speed setting libraries for free, which is a massive help to those getting started with these powerful machines. There is also the Louisiana Hobby Guide channel, where he actually has these same Monport machines and goes over some setup in case you get stuck and need some extra help. And of course, there is the Lightburn YouTube channel that can help you to get this machine up and running with the software using the settings from the EasyCAD 2 parameters that come with this machine. So the first thing that I did with the machine was a simple test on a stainless steel coin. This is the design that I have used in the past, and the machine was able to engrave into the coin quickly and deep. This took about three and a half minutes total at 250 millimeters a second at 100% power and 25 kilohertz. It did a great job, and this is truly engraving into the surface and is not just a superficial mark. It's not 3D by any means, but I will be getting to that shortly. The next thing I did was this image on one of those metal business cards, and it did a really nice job again. This took about three and a half minutes as well and turned out really nice at 300 millimeters a second and 35% power and 25 kilohertz. I did the same thing on this Batman image, and it also turned out very nice as well. So because this machine has that 200 millimeter lens, I wanted to try that wedding image as big as the machine could go, so I burned the image onto this black coated metal sheet at the full workable area, and it also turned out very nice. I don't really see any weakening of the laser as it reaches the outside edges of the image. The whole thing looked really well engraved from the center all the way out to the corners. The next object I worked on was a gift my wife wanted to give a friend, so I added her initials to this pink tumbler. Now, I did this by simply setting the tumbler under the laser and burning on it. I didn't use any type of rotary for this, but I will be getting into using a rotary for this machine in just a bit. The next thing I wanted to try, and really was the main reason why I wanted to use Lightburn for this machine, was 3D engraving. This is a process where you take a 3D model and convert that into a height map that can then be used in Lightburn, where it will slice the height map into different layers, much like a slicer in a 3D printing program would. I used this process to create this coin in brass. The whole process took about three hours to complete at 300 millimeters a second and 75% power. 
I did this at 25 kilohertz frequency and 1016 DPI with 250 passes. And what I was left with was a really super detailed 3D engraving on this coin. Now, I probably could have increased the speed to decrease the engraving time. But the surface on this coin is a little rough as the process is oblating the metal and not carving it away as would be done with a CNC machine. However, there is no way I would have been able to get this type of detail with the sharp corners with my hobby CNC machine. I also wanted to point out that it's super important to have some sort of air filtration system when using this machine. It is pulverizing the brass into dust and you don't want to be breathing that in. On all of my jobs, I have a powerful fan that is sucking out all of the fumes away from my work area, even if you can't see it in the video. I'm also wearing the provided safety glasses at all times when using this machine. After I was done with the coin, I decided to buy a cheap jewelry tumbler and drop the coin in with some steel polishing bearings and water and polished it till the coin was smooth but still left all the fine details. I can't wait to try this process out on some more objects including some injection mold ideas I have been working on. After that was done, I wanted to test the pedal that comes with the machine for setting up batch jobs. I decided to make a metal business card that used the pedal to run each job without having to click back to the computer to start it. I simply used the provided brackets and set up the card. Here you can see me pressing the pedal with my hand, but there was plenty of cord to have been able to step on this, instead keeping both hands free. Now I'm going to run this entire business card in real time with the sound so you can get the full effect of this machine in action. You can skip ahead about two and a half minutes to pass. After the cards, I wanted to run another batch job, and this time it was on these pneumatic buttons for my injection molding machines. Again, being able to batch these jobs with the pedal makes the task a breeze. The job also incorporates two different materials, the steel on the body and the plastic on the end. It's a good way of not only providing directions on this part of how everything is hooked up, 
but it can also allow me to add a personal touch to the items to sell for my business like I do with these buttons. The machine handled both the metal and plastic without any issues. After that, I wanted to engrave on this stainless steel flask. I wanted to do a black mark instead of engraving deep into the surface, so to do that, you have to defocus your laser by about four millimeters higher, and what you are left with is a nice dark mark on the surface that will last a long time and will not rust. It turned out very nice and I was very happy with the results. The last thing that I wanted to test with this machine was the rotary that I got with this machine. It's an extra separate accessory that you have to purchase, but it will do different things such as tumblers, mugs, and other cylindrical objects. I also have to say this is definitely the beefiest rotary I've ever used as it is over 13 pounds just by itself. I first set it up to burn my logo on this stainless steel plunger. I used this as a test to make sure that I had all of my settings correct in Lightburn. I then attached a tumbler and then I used a little level on that I had to make sure that the top of the tumbler was level with the laser head as much as possible. I then burned this New York image onto it. You may notice that I have some lines running vertically here, but that was my fault for having an overlap setting too high. It's a setting in the rotary window that I had wrong, which is why you see those lines, and it's not a fault of the machine. I ran out of tumblers to test on, so I will have to try again when they come in, but overall, I was pleased with how the rotary performed. So, for my overall impression on this machine, I think that this is a really professional level machine, and it is fast, accurate, and powerful. It's a solid built machine, but does require some space to use it, however. It's not light. Neither section of the split laser is. The controller is all metal and seems to weigh a lot more than just a regular desktop computer would. Everything else seems very well put together, and I have no doubt that this would last quite a while in a full production setting. Really, if I had anything that I would like to add to this machine, it would be a way to have it more enclosed. It would be really great to not only have some sort of shield on the machine that blocks out the infrared light, but also something to remove the fumes and the ablated metals. You really don't want to be breathing in metal dust, so it's important to have that exhausted out of the work area. I do like how there is a large surface with lots of threaded holes, so I was adding my own exhaust system in, and I was sure to not only have my glasses on, but I also had it covered from direct view when I was using the machine. I would really have liked something to enclose the machine to improve that safety factor even more. I did like the flexibility of the pedal for the batch engravings. The rotary again was super solid and worked well. I also like how I can switch out the laser lens for different sizes, so that I can essentially have a stronger, more focused beam the smaller I go. Again, I've already purchased the 110 millimeter lens for this machine as well, so I look forward to setting that up soon and testing it out. So that's it. I wanted to thank Monport for sending this machine to me for my honest review. If you like this review, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for even more videos having to do with laser engraving, injection molding, 3D printing, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.